Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's switch gears now to what has been a very interesting week at um, the Emirate of Kano, where the former Emirate, uh, former Emir, Mohammed Sanusi II, was dethroned, and afterwards he was uh, banished to our village in Nasara State. In one week, he was dethroned, banished, and there was uh, uh, his lawyers went to court before he was released. And these are some of the images of him arriving in Lagos. Yes. And so the Attorney General of the Federation has come out and the Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, has come out to say he distanced himself from the dethronement and banishment of the former Emir of Kano, Muhammad Osanis II. Mr. Malami was reacting a short statement by his Special Assistant on Media and Publi Public Relations, Mr. Umar Grandu, and Sunday said that he is not in no way connected with the dethronement of Sanusi. The president, Muhammad Buhari, has also said that he has no hand in it. Let's get a sense of what this means. It's been a very big story, one of intrigue, one of political involvement and uh, interplays that we've seen over uh, the week. One thing that was major was the fact that when Ms., uh, uh, the um, former Mayor Sanusi was dethroned in Kano, his friend in Kaduna, the governor of Kaduna State, came to his aid. And all of what happened, let's get a sense of it. Uh, one of the Northern elites tonight will be talking to us, Professor Munzali Jibril. Uh, he was uh, uh, the Prof. Chancellor of the Federal University of Lafayette and former Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission. Professor, it's good again to see you. Uh, apologies for disturbing you <laughs> in uh, such a short time that we we'll have you, uh, had you on the program and yet, yet you're back again. But there's been so much development since uh, the last time you spoke about this matter and we thought that it was going to be good to have you back to speak on since you have a, a good knowledge about the scenarios which have played out. Now, the new developments are that the former MS says he's not challenging, although he has good grounds to get back to the throne, but he's not challenging it. The second thing is that the Attorney General, who has uh, in some quarters been uh, accusing fingers on his role, uh, says that he, he has no role to play. The president has also said he had no role to play. From where you're sitting, Prof, what do you make of all of these scenarios, the politics that have been drawn into the dethronement of the former emir? Thank you very much, Shil. Um Well, it's uh, very difficult to speak in the absence of access to the facts of the case. Uh, but from uh, my distant point of observation, uh, it's very difficult for me to imagine the Attorney General of the Federation being involved in a purely state matter. And uh, his, the statement issued by his special assistant actually alluded to the fact that this is a case that is already in court and when the case unfolds, then the facts will be known. But for, 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 for the avoidance of doubt, he was saying he was not involved, he had no um, hand in the matter. And of course, the, the, the president's spokesman had already, uh, a few days earlier, also made the same denial. Um, my, my own feeling is that uh, the federal government was not involved, except indirectly, in the sense that the, the commissioner of police and the director of SSS uh, in Kano, who enforced the banishment, the illegal 
banishment order are agents of the federal government. But by our own federal structure and arrangement, uh, for security reasons, they sometimes take orders from the state governors. Uh, it's only when they are in doubt that they refer to their overall bosses in Abuja or in the case of the police at the zone, zonal headquarters. Uh, so um, to that extent, yes, the federal government is in, indirectly involved, but I personally do not think, I would, and I would be very surprised if it turns out that uh, either the president himself or an important agent of his, like the attorney general, were actually involved in the dethronement or the banishment. Uh, you were telling us the other time of the interventions to stop the dethronement. Uh, or how things went so bizarre to the extent of uh, the emir, one of Nigeria's uh, top or, or biggest uh, traditional rulers, was removed from office. Perhaps this is not the first time we're seeing these kind of things happening. But uh, the, the big question will be, how did things get this bad? Because of the inferences now that has been drawn into the politics, the role, what was said and what was not said by the former mayor, what got the governor angry, the real reasons why he was removed. Uh, how would you assess that? Well, um, last time I was trying to say that I was um, an eyewitness to an encounter uh, between the former emir and the president when the president visited Kano, I think early this year at the passing out parade of the police academy, Woodhill. And I, I left the scene, of course, uh, uh, when the emir came. Uh, and, but I said it was not an accident that a few days after um, the, there was an announcement it, it wasn't said explicitly that it was the federal government that was setting up the Abdul Salami committee. But Abdul Salami is a former head of state of this country, and the setting up of the committee was, did not emanate from his own office. And it was a very high powered committee with a former head of service and secretary to the government, Alaji Adamufika, Wazir and Fika. Uh, um, uh, um, Ambassador Ibrahim Gambari, and such heavyweights of the North uh, as members. Uh, no ordinary person could have set up this committee and uh, prevailed on these uh, very high caliber people to, to serve, except the government. But you see, because of our arrangement, um, constitutional arrangement, in a federation, the federal government could not have directly in, um, intervened in a matter that was within the jurisdiction and purview of the state. So um, there, nobody, attribute, nobody took credit for the setting up of the committee. But it is significant that uh, General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, after the deposition, uh, did admit that the committee con had concluded its work and submitted its report to the president, which implied that the president had something to do with the committee and was interested in reconciliation, and that was why the committee was set up. Prof, now, I, I don't have the facts, but it, it would appear to me that uh, the president may have intervened, and the, the intervention would take the form of talking to the governor to say, please, whatever you do, uh, do not depose the emir or do not dethrone the emir, uh, tread softly and all that. And several other people, uh, the uh, um, uh, Islamic scholars, for example, politicians, um, uh, ex-ministers and former governors of the states, everybody who is anything, uh, uh, talked to, had, had talked to the governor, uh, but it appeared that he was determined to proceed with the, this course of action. Uh, and so, uh, well, it, it has happened, but uh, the, the consolation is, is the way that uh, the main victim himself has taken it uh, uh, philosophically and uh, has even refused to explore his legal options, uh, which 
uh, as he said, and as many legal minds have said, uh, if pursued, would have been very fruitful. But he is clearly not interested in challenging the deposition. And uh, he is ready to proceed, as he said, with the next phase of his life. Prof, let me, let me ask you this, because a lot of people are drawing the politics of 2023 into this. Whether or not Senator Kwonkunso is on the side of uh, the deposed mayor and what conflict that has brought to the table, uh, whether or not the deposed mayor was against or did not support uh, Governor Ganduje in, at the last election and what this all means together. In fact, some of people are already talking about the politics of 2023. But from your own standpoint, Professor, Give us a sense of what impact or what this means for the northern politics of Nigeria and, of course, uh, the governance and leadership of the northern Nigeria, especially some of those things that the deposed Amir Sanusi stood for and spoke against. Well, um, <clears throat> it is true. Actually, uh, in my interview with Arise TV on Tuesday, I said all the other insinuations about, about the motive for the deposition were off the mark. The real reason uh, was the perceived involvement of the former Emir in the election of 2019, uh, uh, where, where Ganduje um, perceived him as throwing his weight behind Konkoso and the PDP. Uh, I think this was the real reason and uh, Perhaps that to, to the governor, that was an unforgivable offense. Um, now, politics, as you know, uh, is a very, very unpredictable uh, game. But from the events of the last few days, it would appear that Ganduje may have actually catapulted uh, former Emir Sanusi to a higher political uh, position than he pre previously had, because already people are talking about him as a, a possible running mate to a southern presidential candidate within the APC. Um, never mind that he was perceived as supporting PDP, because Kano is actually a solid APC state, but um, for certain reasons, people voted in protest, uh, I, I don't have to go into those issues. Uh, so, um, and now that he's, he is free from his royal duties, and therefore from uh, 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 the, the things that barred him from uh, getting involved in partisan politics, it, you, you can't rule out the possibility that he might get involved in past partisan politics and that the, the dethronement might turn out to be a blessing to him in disguise. So to that extent, I would say that, yes, this has some implications for the politics of 2023. Uh, also, the statement credited to Governor Konkoso to the effect that uh, uh, the president was personally involved in the dethronement, I, I personally attribute that to the part of the politicking uh, for 2023, uh, because uh, this would uh, discredit the president in the eyes of, of people, at least in the calculations of, of, of politicians. But uh, it, it really, as I said, it doesn't make sense to me, and it, the evidence is not there to support it. Professor Munzali Jibril, uh, Pro Chancellor of Federal University, Lafayette, former Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission. Always a pleasure talking to you about some of these issues. Thank you so much for talking to us tonight.